Welcome to Card On Over Coffee. Please remember to join us live on Twitter Spaces Monday through Friday at 2.30 p.m. UTC, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you're hungry because we're going to talk about yams and DeFi with Yam4. Don't forget, we'll be in Denver, Colorado, August 24th through the 26th at Rare Evo. Get your early bird tickets now at rareevo.io. And yes, you can use crypto. Use discount code COC10 for 10% off the already discounted prices. Got your coffee? Let's get to it. I wanted to use the soundboard, but I'm low-key afraid. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be quiet? You want to be gentle? I don't think so. Could... Who do we have first? Yamfor? Ooh, Yamfor was our first ever sponsor. So they deserve that round of applause for sure. Nope, I Very thought. Nice. All right. Absolutely. Yes. Th- Welcome to the stage. I think they're already here. Hi, good exactly. morning. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, sorry, good guys. Morning. I'm just having some a lot of connection problems. I've been dropping in and out. So I do apologize. Don't apologize. You're right on time. Let's give him a round of emojis and applause. And even Lido came here to say hi. Cheers, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I just realized that, <laughs> Cook, if we do it together, the clapping is even louder. That was amazing. <laughs> right. Experimenting. So what's going on, man? Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, Block Chalk, yeah, Lido. Um, hey, guys, Epoch. Um, yeah, it's been good. Um, we're pretty excited to uh, announce that, um, well, as many community members already know, that we have our test net scheduled for next month. So that's a huge sort of step forward, and that's going to be really exciting to showcase what we've been working on. Um, yeah. Um, uh, you so probably, so, if for, oh, there's probably a lot of people here that don't know who you are, Okay. And the name's kind of funny. You probably should maybe give a little preface as to what you do, where you came from, and what the name really represents. <laughs> no, no, fair point. Um, hey, guys, how are you? Um, so, hi, my name is Brandon. I'm the founder of Yam4. Uh, Yam4 is a decentralized non-custodial lending protocol uh, building on Cardano. Uh, Yam4 is what we're coining the first community-backed lending protocol. And we've gone, th- we've gone at things a slightly different way. So Yam4, um, unlike most traditional lending uh, slash borrowing protocols, um, is offering crypto back loans with no margin calls, no liquidation risk, uh, indefinite loan terms, and um, um, uh, indefinite loan terms and no interest payments. Uh, that's quite a mouthful, and that's a lot of uh, feature sets. And we're basically able to do this because of um, one Cardano's or a Boris consensus mechanism, which allows liquid staking, which we utilize as kind of the interest repayment that you'd normally sort of um you'd pay out in a traditional loan and to the protocol does own all liquidity lent out and it is using this very interesting sort of um i suppose like uh profit circle um since there's two collaterals at play there's the ada collateral which you will be um, depositing into the protocol and also cdlp Uh, i'll go a bit further into that but um but yeah with those two sort of uh things at play here we're able to offer um these crypto back loans that are really quite passive uh, there are sort of um, drawbacks to this approach. Uh, the biggest factor is scalability. We will uh, be pr- we will be mostly a niche sort of protocol, but that's fine as well because we are targeting that market of people that are just want sort of a completely passive exposure to uh, ADA, and that's kind of Yamfor yeah, in a nutshell. So CDLP, explain that just a little bit to everybody for those who don't know. Yeah, sure. Uh, so CBLP is the native governance utility token of Yam4. CBLP is what's required as the secondary asset to actually take a loan on Yam4, as well as acting as a governance uh, token as well. Um, so CBLP is the foundational slash bedrock asset that's basically um, in charge and also uh, symbolically sort of connected to Yam4 itself. Okay, so everybody, in essence, it's kind of like a club, a loan, a loan, a lending and borrowing club, right? Um, because you you need that CDLP token in order to be able to participate, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you need to, um, so during the process, so if you want to um, enter a loan position with the AM4, you do have to provide um, ADA and CBLP, and that ratio is determined via uh, governance sort of parameter. It's um, determined via governance. So in the case um, of Yamfor starting out launching, 
it's going to be 50 50. So in the case of, let's say you have a hundred dollars worth of ADA collateral that has to now be sort of um, tailored into $50 worth of ADA and $50 worth of CBLP. And that gets deposited into YAM for you to get back um, a one-to-one -one value exchange of the ADA collateral uh, in USD terms. So in this case, $50 of um, stablecoin payment back. And now you have this pa completely passive position. Um, what YAM for does is basically collects all your ADA staking rewards that are being generated by the ADA portion that you've deposited in the protocol. And when your ADA collateral, uh, specifically your ADA collateral, um, is 110% of the borrowed principal amount, that's when you can exit your loan position, take any surplus, apart from the 110 that goes to the protocol, right, and all the staking rewards, of course, um, take any surplus ADA, plus, return your C plus you get the entirety of your CBRP token returned back to you. Now, the, big, uh, the biggest thing I want to sort of preference with this is I've sort of named all these features of, you know, no liquidation risk, no margin calls, no interest payments in indefinite loan terms. And people sort of tend to think that has no risk. The, the risk here is that CBLP token that you're having exposure to, because although you get back the entirety of that CBLP token at the closure of a loan position, um, that CBLP token's value could be greatly diminished, right? It's going to be a very volatile asset. So you could have almost what we're, nicknaming like almost quasi impermanent loss so to speak right um so that's the risk factor here so make no mistake there is a risk to this um type of loan position and it is from the exposure to native asset so to that end with that i have a question surrounding that because obviously you're relying on a group and everybody in the group needs to remain within the a to cdlp pool in order to keep it constant um if the if it's raised on one side you know, if there's more put in it, does it go in lockstep and keep it 50 50 as it goes? You're not you're not having to like a, a regular liquidity pool as a value of ADA goes up. If CDLP doesn't go up with it, and you're having to match that. Right. So there's IL there. Correct. Exactly. You're just matching the value in USD terms. So that's the underlying value that you deposit in. Um, with that, you've actually hinted is basically just that base ratio, right? Because the whole idea behind Yamfor is, hey, if we have this, let's say 50-50 that we're starting off with, right? The idea is like, as soon as the protocol, and this is from the, um, the state, obviously it gets, uh, it, it gets an influx of capital every epoch because of these taking rewards of all the deposited ADA collateral in the protocol, as well as like the liquidity treasury, but I'll, I'll go into that in just a second. But the whole idea behind that is as soon as that position, as soon as someone exits a loan position or this capital um, or this capital influx in the protocol, that's immediately lent because there's always going to be an overwhelming um, demand versus supply, right? So because the rates should be so good that you're hitting this thing called, we call a base rate, where basically any capital that's brought into the protocol is immediately lent off. And that just, um, that in turn sort of, um, can maintains the buying pressure on CBLP in the secondary market. And sort of it sort of coincides with basically any profits gathered by the protocol are being transferred over to the um, CBLP, um, sorry, CBLP secondary market on sort of like a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, so if it's 5% growth in the protocol side uh, in regards to, let's say, interest repayments in the form of staking rewards, obviously staking rewards are closer to like 3.5%, right? Um, that should be reflected exactly the same in the CBLP market. Um, so I, I hope that kind of made sense, but, um, but yeah, that's the basic sort of gist with that. It does a little bit. I have another question, but Epoch, you might be surrounded by children. <laughs> oh, that's fine. No, sure. I am not surrounded by children. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hi, Brandon, right? How's it going? Sorry, yeah. I'm out of breath. I just was shoveling a lot of snow. <laughs> no, so of course, good. Blockjot calls me as I'm as far as humanly possible. <laughs> I look like a crazy person running through my fucking driveway. Uh, but appreciate that, Black Dog. Um, but I just wanted to you know, say, hey, it's been a while since we chatted. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, and you know, wanted to really see you know, what's on your mind for the next quarter and how usage has been at the platform. Yeah, yeah. So we're actually releasing our public testnet uh, next month. So that's going to be really exciting. And in the next, I want to say two to three days, we're releasing what we're calling this uh, the UI slash UX preview. So basically, uh, people get to interact with the DAP front end of YAM for without all the back end integration. So obviously, the wallet connection is not going to be there. And there's no there's not going to be any sort of forming of um, any forming of smart contract transactions. But this is a really great way for, for the community to specifically give uh, tips and sort of feedback and suggestions in regards to what the UI slash UX element um, is sort of uh, planning out. So that's going to be really exciting. 
Uh, but yeah, but next month is the big month for us, and that's going to be really exciting. Uh, next quarter, though, that's depending on how sort of things go. I'm I'm ten, I'm sort of um, I'll say tentatively that we're aiming for um, and after audits, of course, we're aiming for hopefully mainnet launch. Um, that's the plan. But uh, but yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how that sort of goes. We don't really want to rush things, so if you know if these things uh, take a bit longer, that's fine. But um, but yeah, but in the short term, that uh, UI slash UX preview and followed by the mainnet launch uh, happening next month. That sounds great. Sounds like we got the alpha. It's dropping next quarter. It's going down. So the the one thing I have is having to do with the governance token, obviously, um, and how you, in essence, are going to do a profit share, in essence, uh, to depending on the amount. You can only own one token, or can you own multiple tokens uh, as a uh, being a member of EM4 uh, from a, a customer point of view? Yeah, yeah. So there's only really one token. Um, so Yam4 is really only concentrated on just one specific niche lending scenario, and that is just giving passive income. I'm um, sorry, passive exposure to ADA uh, as a base collateral, and obviously you have CBLP acting as a secondary collateral. There's only really one token sort of in the picture in regards to, um, uh, apart from ADA, of course, which is CBLP, and there's no profit share. It, what's interesting, right? Because Essentially, what happens is you can either sort of go about this two ways because we have had these uh, interesting discussions on our Discord. So you can have this sort of mechanism where you have, um, obviously, let's say um, you've got Yam for as it is, uh, but instead of the um, instead of the profits sort of being gained going to um, being arb- sort of uh, being arbitraged because they actually get converted over uh, via arbitra- uh, arbitraging um, mechanisms to stable coins, and that those stable coins obviously get lent out. And that sort of provides secondary buying pressure for the CBLP token in the secondhand market. But instead of that occurring, uh, let's say you just sort of had this sort of straight staking portal where people could stake the CBLP tokens and just gain the rewards of the protocol, right? That's all fine and dandy. And, you know, obviously sort of, um, but but obviously that kind of actually leads to a less, less ideal sort of long-term sort of, um, if you will, like, I guess profit profit project uh, projection right because like you're actually compounding when you sort of take the effect of like okay instead of giving these rewards directly to CBLP token holders we're going to convert these rewards at a very small fee to stable coins and with those stable coins people will buy um, people will buy CBLP uh, in accordance to the um, the profits that we are sort of own, um, the profits that the protocol is generating, right? So you get the same effect, except for it's completely passive. You can just hold CBLP and it grows in value USD wise because the protocol is uh, facilitated right. by the NAD, right? Um, so, but but this way instead, you also get that compounding effect, right? Because obviously that's money that's not being given out and that's money that's compounding and adding on top uh, via staking rewards. And also we do have a little governance thing um, that so no, I shouldn't say a little governance thing. We do have a governance parameter where we actually switch on interest repayments because at some point the stake the staking rewards will diminish to a point where it's just not quite feasible to, you know, sort of utilize this method where it's just solely relying on it. So we do have a governance as well. We have we do have a governance switch where a fixed interest payment scheme is added on top of the uh, t- of the uh, staking rewards being collected by the protocol. Okay, so let's talk about the team and the technology a little bit. Uh, and also uh, the code and whether or not uh, you've already gone through an audit and, and things of that nature. Uh, get us up to date on that. Yeah, yeah. So we're a fairly, we're a fairly small team compared to most other teams. Um, there's approximately four people on the team. Uh, my, there's myself. The, um, there's myself as the sort of um, founder, I guess the idea guy <laughs> in the most um, – in the, the, the most sense um there's also i just mainly just sort of um dictate coordination and sort of communications and um social me- um social media um i do try to help out here and there where i can in regards to just um a bit of the code base mostly just front end stuff and not that well because that's not really my area of um, expertise unfortunately um we've got anthony um he's our front end de- he's one of our front end developers we do have um james he's another front end develop um another front end developer he's from the evm slash ethereum side of things so he does quite have a lot of experience in that aspect uh which is bringing over to cardano and it's been very lovely he's been absolutely amazing uh then we have sean he's our sole haskell developer um and he's sort of um he's just he's been incredible so far as well 
Um, we're fairly fortunate with the fact, I think, as well, that Yam4 is, um, when you look at it in its basic composition, it's really just a modified swap contract. Um, so, which, you know, which is not sort of, uh, it's nothing negative. That's not, that's nothing, you know, it is quite, I think, personally, um, and bias, of course, I think we're sort of bringing a lot to the table here. Uh, but just being, just the, having the base, that basic composition means that it's quite sort of easier to build than something quite expansive, like, um, you know, like, uh, let's say what Meld is doing, or just uh, these other sort of bigger, pro uh, bigger protocols. Um, so that's an advantage in that aspect. Uh, but yeah, we're a fairly small team, about four people. We are looking for um, hopefully getting one more front-end uh, developer just as sort of a backup because we do have that testnet coming on and I'd, I'd like to just get someone that can sort of um, get more people just so I can sort of have on call and just sort of like fix minor issues as they pop up as quickly as possible. Um, but yeah. Uh, so the, the auditing of the smart contract because obviously you, oh, yes, you definitely so. are using smart contracts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, my, my, uh, my apologies. I've completely glossed over that. Uh, we do plan on getting audits um, accomplished. Um, we are leaning very heavily on, um, I, I'm, I'm always mispronouncing them, um, canonical or canonical. Um, canonical. Yeah. yeah, canonical. Yeah. yeah. So we're, <laughs> Charles' favorite word. Hmm? Oh, gosh, he actually uses it quite a lot. I'm just like, that's not a normal word. I remember just thinking like that. People don't use that casually. He, anyway, see, he people no, so I, I had to look it up and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, go, let's go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, me too. Me too. Um, so we are uh, we are heavily leaning towards them. Um, they're a bit of a smaller firm, uh, but they still maintain a. Um, I would say quite a repu. They have quite a reputable reputation behind them, and they've also helped bigger teams such as JPEG Store and a lot of the other NFT marketplaces. So that's what we're using to. Um, that's who. That's one of the serious contenders that we're um, most likely to be utilizing. Um, of course, we have Vacuum Labs. Um, as well as uh, potential, uh, but auditing is quite expensive. So we'll probably have to figure something out if we go for one of those bigger firms like M Labs or Vacuum uh, Vacuum Labs or, um, um, or but yeah, or such. But uh, but yeah, very nice. So the other question I have then is is that if you're just going to be using ADA as the base um, and CDLP as a secondary, then are you thinking about in the future using a stablecoin? Because ADA can be a little unstable, right? Uh, is there thoughts going forward to where, you know, I don't have to risk or worry about IL as much um, if while in this particular loan product or lending product, right? Uh, do you see where I'm going with it? Is there options in the future? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, there's. Um, we already use stablecoins as the payment given out to um, to um, borrowers. So Yamfor does have stablecoins. Um, it's just that with stablecoins uh, in Yamfor, so we have a stablecoin treasury. But if the protocol is keeping to that sort of uh, base um, base idea, right, where basically any capital that's uh, in um, any capital that's captured in the protocol, whether it's via the liquidity staking por uh, portal or via the um, general sort of like ADA staking rewards that, that are garnered from the um, ADA deposited by borrowers in the protocol, uh, that's all being arbitraged to um, stable coins and that's being lent out to uh, borrowers. So again, for, uh, from day one, we'll be uh, dealing with stable coins and sending that out as payment. Um, so uh, yeah. And and I understand that you're using the ADA then to be then put into a pool, which then is garnering ADA rewards. And that's part of the way that YAM4 is going to generate revenue, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the sole method. So when someone enters a position with YAM4, um, they deposit their ADA and CBRP in a, uh, let's say, uh, one in a UTXO, right? Just sort of um, by itself. And that UTXO obviously points to a staking key and that staking key points to a stake pool. And obviously that's sort of like managed in the background and evenly distributed uh, amongst the list of governance voted stake pools that are approved by um, approved via governance to be um, uh, be utilized by the protocol um, via CBLB token holders. Um, that's how YAM for, that's the sole method um, slash revenue of YAM for uh, until that sort of like fixed interest repayment scheme switches on. And obviously that's not going to affect loans that have obviously been sort of um, opened up before that happens, right? Uh, before that, that hap um, that's occurred, I should say. Um, but, but essentially, yeah, the sole method is via that staking, um, that's those staking rewards from the deposit um, ADA collateral of borrowers. And we've also got the liquidity pool. So I'll just dive into that really quickly. So basically the liquidity pool is, you can think of it as an ISPO 
and essentially it's evenly um, it's distributing a set amount of um, set amount of CBLP per quarter, uh, per epoch I should say uh, and <clears throat> based on how many delegators that are in that pool ADA delegators right so it's almost like providing liquidity uh, in a normal sort of um, lending slash borrowing protocol uh, except for your um, your the protocol is just benefiting off your staking rewards uh, in regards to that ADA that you're depositing in the protocol. So you basically get in proportionality to your percentage in that uh, delegation pool, that ADA delegation pool, uh, the CBRP rewards. So if you have 1% of all the delegations in, in that ADA delegate, uh, delegation pool, you get 1% of the CBRP tokens that are scheduled to be distributed for that epoch. So that's another method. And that's that's another method of the protocol gaining revenue, and that also um, gives a slight bit of um, slight but controlled inflation rate, which is controllable via governance as well. So the the one question I have is, and always with smart contracts, obviously you are letting your asset leave your wallet uh, because it's going into a smart contract. Uh, it's not necessarily locked, you know, because you you obviously talk about with the indefinite loan terms that the participant can remove that at any time. And and then of course be out of it, right? Um, yeah, pe pending pe uh, pending that the aid, um, that the ADA collateral is at one hundred and ten percent of the borrowed principal amount, so uh, they can so either you, choose to pay off the difference as well. They can make up the difference uh, by paying that ADA or just waiting for the assets to uh, appreciate uh, in value. I if see. Not, so yeah. so it almost reminds me of a balloon payment. That part is that kind of similar. Uh, I'm not familiar with balloon payments. So in essence, what a balloon payment is, is you really don't pay any of the interest uh, up front and you have it for a particular term, but then there's going to be a balloon payment at the end. It, in essence, uh, uh, con continues to accumulate the interest. Uh, and then at the end of it, you either get out of that loan uh, and go into something more like a fixed or a low APY, uh, you know, that's variable, right? Or you pay that thing off, which is never a good idea. Uh, so this added 10% at the end. So if I have a, a $10,000 or a $10,000 ADA loan, I'm going to have to come up with a thousand ADA, right? At the end of this loan in order to get, remove or get out of this loan position, correct? Along with the original amount that I got lent to me, correct? Well, if you've got a 10, if you've got $10,000 worth of ADA, you would first turn that into $5,000 worth of ADA and a uh, 5000 Right, um, and you'd only be able to close your loan position and gather your CBL, um, get your um, get your CBLP tokens returned to you if your ADA collateral is at one hundred and ten percent. So basically, five thousand five hundred. Uh, w w in regards to the interest repayments, it's just the staking rewards uh, until that sort of fixed governance fee, uh, until that right. fixed interest repayment sort of comes through, and that's going to be uh, again just fixed. It's not going to balloon in size or any of that sort of jazz. Uh, but but that's the that's the general gist. I, I think it does uh, fr from the sounds of it initially. Uh, it, it does have some characteristics with uh, the um, balloon payments, uh, mm -hmm. but, but I think there's some um, at least with Cardano um, and the staking method, it's it's fairer. Uh, but that that ten percent is quite a lot though for some people, so that's absolutely fine because it, it just depends right. if the loan makes sense for uh, for uh, you know for, um, for 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 your particular situation. So because sometimes sure. the math doesn't really quite add up. And uh, I'll admit that I'm more than happy to admit that, definitely. Well, there's going to be a bunch of – the thing I, I think about is going to be a bunch of DGENs that are going to think that I'm going to either buy this NFT or I'm going to buy this uh, token that's going to go to the moon or, you know, whatever the case may be, right? And obviously, everybody is taking their own risks. And because, we, you know, we are the owner, we are the owners of our financial future and our financial present, uh, you are also responsible for your losses as well in the decisions that you make. Uh, and uh, so they have to be careful with that. So with that said, are you doing any educational stuff, YouTube videos, things of that nature, explaining the risks that come with this? Because most of it sounds like, oh, my God, I can get a loan for free. Literally, that's what people are going to hear. They're going to jump in and then realize that's not necessarily exactly the case. You know what I mean? 100 percent. Actually, 110 percent. A uh, little pun for the thing, um, but no, no. On a serious note, um, we do have, and we're very sort of honest with the drawbacks and the positives of a loan position like this, right? Um, we've said from the get go, and, and whenever I've sort of, um, whenever I've had the honor of like speaking somewhere, I always sort of mention, hey, the risk factor here is that overexposure to the CBRP token. So you're ta you're still taking a risk, right? Nothing, uh, nothing in life really is for free. It's just a different type of risk that you're taking. 
because you can depending again at just how volatile that the cvlp token is and when you buy in your sort of allocation right you could be looking at like um you can be looking at sort of a situation where you were just much much better off taking a traditional um financial uh, traditional crypto back loan from um you know an Aave or a compound sort of uh, type thing so that's the biggest factor we have put disclaimers on everything um so we, we try to sort of be really transparent with that. So on our Discord, um, obviously, when I'm a, whenever I'm in this sort of situation where I'm talking about EAMF, I do mention that as well. It's also on our Git book. It's also on a light paper as well. Uh, it's also on the website, I think, as well. Um, or our previous, we- our previous website, we do have to sort of update this and you want to maybe add that in there. Um, but yeah, but it'll be sort of, it'll be very sort of well documented in the sort of Git book tutorial. Uh, we'll have a section, Git book tutorial for the testnet, right? And, and it's a testnet as well, so people won't be playing with real assets. Um, and we'll probably also, we'll, we'll try to, there, there is a bit of a budget constraint, but eventually I'm hoping that we can get to a point where we can release videos of like, hey, this is how YAM4 works. And because it's one thing to sort of, um, it's one thing to show like a, a 20 second to maybe 40 second explanation video. It's a complete other thing to expect someone to, you know, um, they can sit through that, that's fine. But it's another thing to expect someone to actually read like a 20 minute white paper. Um, because that, that's quite a lot of, um, that, that's, that's quite a lot of time commitment for this concept that, you know, they, right, they've right, never right. really heard most, of, right? Yeah. Most users aren't going to read that, you know? Not, I mean? not so at all. I would say then maybe you want to talk to Pete, uh, you'd talk to Cardano Paul, you would talk to maybe even Army of Spies and have a short video uh, talking about the protocol and the positives and negatives of it, you know? And then what it sounds to me like is, is that if, as me as a, a user that may use it, uh, I would look for CDLP uh, because it's obviously going to be uh, something I could track as far as its value goes. Uh, as the value drops in the CDLP and I start to watch it. So it's gonna take a little time, right? We're gonna need uh, use case, people using it, and then the price of CDLP and where it's at. And then from there, when it's on the lower side, then that would be the time to get the loan, not at when it's at its peak, because then most likely when you get out of that loan, you're going to get wrecked or you're going to have to sit in that loan until the CDLP value goes back up. Correct. Yeah. You've actually touched on a really important point. It's uh, really quite important when you actually do contain, when you do get that exposure to CBLP, right? Cause you obviously, you're providing ADA alongside the um, CBLP as collateral for the protocol. So it's really important uh, in regards to timing of things, right? The really interesting part here is the test net will be quite a factor in regards to just, I, I think education, it's going to play a very big part because a lot of people that I've sort of um, chatted to, they've read the live paper and they've sort of seen the documentation, but, I think once you get a sort of hands-on feel approach of how it actually works, that's going to make such a huge difference uh, when it comes to just understanding these sort of um, these aspects. Um, we do have a video with Pete. Um, we will sort of try to reach out to other Cardano influence as well. Um, but uh, but yeah, but I think the test net will be the best aspect in regards to the overvaluation. That's a really, really good point as well because uh, CBLP, I think, unlike a lot of other sort of um, sort of uh, tokens, it's very easy to gauge the price valuation of CBLP because CBLP is basically always going to be deposited in conjunction with ADA. And the whole sort of idea behind CBLP is like, hey, as soon as some, it's it's always like it's always acting as a security deposit, right? So as soon as you're done with that CBLP and it's returned to you when you sell it on the secondhand market, right? Obviously, that CBLP is now in the secondhand market, which is a pre- affect prices on. Um, which is affect prices on the, you know, non referable right. size, but also that's a wild card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, oh, hundred percent, definitely. But but also that sort of um, that that capital has now been freed up. So the idea is someone should immediately buy that CBL people in the second hand market to enter another loan, uh, to enter a loan position with Yam for uh, to borrow against that freed up capital because the rates are at the base where it's it's um it's enticing enough. For there to always sort of um, for Yamble to always have this zero slash empty stablecoin treasury, so um, that's sort of um, so so in, in in other words, basically, if the stablecoin treasury is at X amount, then and if CBLP is playing a value of being sort of deposited at X amount uh, of at X amount of um, of ADA, you you can kind of sort of uh, you can sort of piece two and two together and sort of go, okay, CBLP should only represent. Uh, X percent of the value of the stablecoin treasury that's been lent out, right? So obviously it's like three times that. So 
and therefore the value is you know three times as much as it, um as it should be um okay so yeah it's, it's, it's well, interesting oh sorry go ahead well now we're running against a hard stop here uh we've got our other project that's going to be coming up with uh winter nfts so what i'd like to do is uh if you could oh, there might be a question we could uh you can have your question in one second. Let's uh, let Yam for do a call to action, and you can ask her ask a couple of questions. Maybe we could run just a couple of minutes late. But... Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I've uh, I, suck, I suck at these things. <laughs> we, uh, we're terrible at marketing. Um, if, if you guys are interested, please come. Um, please, you know, give us. Um, please participate in the test net. Uh, we'll be having the UI slash UX preview very shortly. Um, if you guys are interested in sort of checking out what we've got sort of going, um, I think you'll be blown away with our UI slash UX. The experience is looking really quite good. I've just got it up here and it's just, yeah, I think we've, um, I, the team's really outdone themselves. Like I'm just, I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by just really great people. Um, so yeah, if you guys, um, if you guys are sort of interested in sort of tuning in to sort of check that out, we do have the test the public test net coming up next uh, month as well. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and, uh, you know, eat, eat yams. Yams are great. Uh, as well, so that's also another factor. I should uh, especially with brown sugar, no question. Can you mix jams with coffee? Hmm. <laughs> mm. Hell yeah, Jenny! What are we talking about? Are you kidding me? When yeah, for for NFTs, I have like three thousand NFTs. I need to get some. I need to loan them. <laughs> Make some money right. out of that. <laughs> oh, actually, you can be because Yam for um, because you have this. You're in this completely passive loan position with Yam for. You can actually trade your NFTs. Um, around so that's a potential method you can use it as a hedging strategy or a trading to sort of um to gain profits or you can actually even you can actually loan out your nft on a lending protocol uh like uh, aada or like uh, lending pond we actually have a partnership with them because of that so you can take a loan against your loan uh, I, I would not recommend this of course but just that's what i'm saying that's is... scary <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a little scary just, just i want my yam yeah. for it just sounds like very like simple set it forget it i just don't have to worry too much about that stuff this is great thanks Absolutely. for coming we love to have you here yeah. no no thank you guys for having me thanks yeah. for explaining it and going into detail about it and uh we look forward to the test uh make sure that you uh tag us in that having to do with the test net so more and more people can uh experience this and support you guys because the test net is the key to you guys going public, so thanks. Yeah. And I, I appreciate the fact that we're a little bit over time, so I'll keep the question really short and succinct. Uh, Yamfor, do you think you can take on Lending Pond? Uh, take on Lending Pond, sorry? Do you think your product can take on Lending Pond as the de facto uh, kind of crypto loan platform on Cardano? Um, we're just in completely, uh, I wouldn't say, um, cause like we're just in very different market spaces. So, cause this is interesting actually, cause people have asked me like, oh, do you think you are a competitor to, to like liquid or like mail, for example? And I sort of go, no, no, because in liquid, if you, uh, it's for a very sophisticated sort of trader. Um, if you want sort of access to these very broad mo uh, money markets where you can lend short, um, you know, sort of borrow and just, um, do all sorts of, uh, types of things. Right. Uh, that's liquid finance. We're we're very much sort of targeting this very niche sort of use case of just completely um, completely passive uh, and set and forget sort of uh, uh, ADA exposure, right? So um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say we're competitors at all. Um, I think it's 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 all complementary. I would say you know uh, everyone's uh, that's one thing with Cardano. Everyone sort of got their really like focus and niche. So um, yeah, I ne I never look at other protocols as really competitors. Um, and uh, yeah, that that's what I would say. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening to Cardano Over Coffee. We'd like to thank our guest, Yam4. We'd like to see you all at the Rare Evo event on August 24th through the 26th. Tickets are on sale now at rareevo.io. Use coupon code COC10 for 10% off. Remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube and enter into our land grab giveaway for one Claver's plot by sharing one of our videos on Twitter. Make sure you tag Cardano Over Coffee giveaway on February 28th.